Ringers have always been the most interesting series of characters to me out of all the different ones in the game, mainly due to their lore and super cool designs. In this stupid little video, I'm going to summarize each of the different bringers, and then rate them based on three things using a 5 star system. 1. The design of the bringer and the in-game model quality. 2. The sound effects and abilities of the character, basically what you're getting for buying it. And 3. If the price is worth what you're getting as a character. If you don't know what bringers are, then I'll give a nice little summary of them, since they are pretty big in the universe of this game. Also, note that I'm not some kind of TPR or map pat lore guy. Tell me how many calories I need, bitch. This is just me saying what I know and guessing a bit of it. Bringers are a pretty concealed kingdom of machines. Not much is known about them in terms of overall lore, but they each have their own neat little stories in their descriptions. All bringers share a power source of agony, an energy based off of the intense negative emotions of humans. I hope that kid fucking dies. There's many variants that have adapted to conditions like the Pizzaplex, the Ocean, or even Soviet Russia, apparently. Though these things are basically international. A lot of them seem to share interest in scrap metal, and don't seem to be the nicest as well. To anyone. In Desolate Hector's lore, he was constantly hunted down by bringers, forcing him to scavenge for scrap in any place he could, and in the Holy Diver quest in-game, a Harbringer is revealed to have been terrorizing Bruce, Elliot, and Levi while they were trapped in Phaslantis. So these guys are kinda assholes. First on our list, Basic Bringers. These are the most common ones, where the most prominent group of them roam in a bringer hive located in the scrap tunnels beneath the landfill in FNAF 2, presenting an intimidating sight due to their tall, dark, and slender appearance and their single glowing red eye. The reason they're built like toothpicks is because creating a lightweight endoskeleton-like frame for their bodies is cheap and efficient for production. It's not like combat is their job after all. That's also why these bringers are darker colored than the other ones like Harbringers or REDs. It keeps them safe in the dark, where they usually prefer to hunt. At first it seems as though they're dormant, seemingly powered off as you pass by. Yet during the Routine Start Anguished Heart quest, it's shown that they're not too fond of thieves stealing from their hive, since when acquiring the energy source intended for Hector in the quest, some of the bringers activate and begin to chase you. If they manage to catch you, then you get teleported back to the bottom of the tunnel system, where you gotta climb back up. To unlock them in-game, you simply must grab this little arm here laying on the ground. Bring it over to this bringer laying on the table, and earn the achievement. Now onto the ranking. Sadly, this is one of the bringers with a less exciting model compared to the others, though I am recording this before their remodel comes out, so I'm guessing I'll change my opinion whenever that happens. It does make sense though, since they are practically the disposable battle droids of this species. While their design is simple, I still love it. It's pretty creepy, and all it really needs to be. 3 stars for design. Next are the abilities. It has the ability to use hard mode vision to make the screen more agony-like, which I think is not that good. And the sounds are pretty mid as well, with the only interesting one being hydraulic sounds. So yeah, what? one star. No! Onto the price, this is an easy 5 stars. This is such an easy achievement, and what you get from it seems, you know, honestly about right for, for its price. In conclusion, uh, I'll put Basic Bringer in, I don't know, C tier. It's not really bad, but it's just down here compared to the other bringers on this list. This variant takes on the disguise of an empty staff bot shell, with the bottom half of its face and torso exposed. They manage to infiltrate the Pizzaplex, camouflaging themselves with the discarded suits of the staff bots. How did they end up here? No one really knows, but it's likely that they're the cause of the mass amounts of trash hidden underneath the building. Basically, they're just normal bringers, but combined with staff bots. As for design, they actually have R15, even though the normal bringer and staff bots don't at the moment. I really like the concept and design, I think the fact that the staff bot suit is all withered away and broken to show some parts of the bringer underneath is pretty cool. Besides that though, compared to the other bringers, it's nothing too crazy, and the coolest part about it for me are probably the long claws, so I'll give it a 3 stars for design. Onto abilities. The Deceit Bringer is able to sprint, transform into normal staff bots, burrow into scrap parts of himself, and scan for any players nearby, which I don't think is even really useful anymore since everyone has a player scan. These are not only decently good, I guess, 
but also accompanied by incredible sound effects. The majority of these sounds originate from staff bot lines, but they're just distorted and heavily warped, resulting in a much creepier tone. The alarm and scream effects also share an equally intense and distorted tone, perfectly aligning with just the craziness of this character. Five stars. <laughs> Lastly, the price. 40 tickets really isn't a lot, and for the Deceit Bringer, I'd say it's fair. The character isn't anything crazy, and nothing sticks out too much about it except for the sounds, I guess. So for a decently low ticket price like this, I'll give it 5 stars again. I actually think I'm going to put it in B tier. It's close to A, but I feel like it just doesn't compare to the others up there. So to all the like 6 Deceit Bringer fans out there, I apologize. The smaller variant of bringers, known as scuttlers, infest animatronic shells, using disguises like the Minionette Puppet or damaged wet floor sign bots. They are also under the category of a deceit type bringer, due to them needing wet floor signs or puppet shells to cover the agony core laying at their center. Scuttlers inhabit a hive of their own, and are actually at war with the nearby Deadringer hive over materials. Because of this, both sides were forced to become Deceit class bringers due to the lack of resources on either side for repairs or stability. Right off the bat, I'm going to say that I love Scuttlers. They are by far one of my favorite characters, and their design is a big part of it. All three forms of the Scuttler are cool. The normal one, the wet floor sign bot one, and the minionette. The designs are some of the coolest I've seen in the game, and the models themselves replicate them so well. Easy 5 stars. Onto the abilities of the Scuttler, you get a bunch. Special selection allows you to change your form, and you're able to crawl on ceilings, burrow and hide in a present. Toggle Particles lets you turn off the agony dripping out the needle in the Scuttler's mouth. You also get to toggle off the present on your back, the little coat it's wearing, or your entire head. While these abilities are honestly really good, the Scuttler really doesn't have any sounds. It has a scream, like most characters. Hydraulic sounds, like all the other bringers, and Pop Goes the Weasel, as Minionette. That's about it. It's hard to say, but I'm giving the Scuttler 4 stars for abilities and sounds. Sounds are one of the most important parts to a character in this game, and it weighs down the Scuttler just a little bit. Lastly, the cost. 95 tickets is a lot, but I'd say it's worth it. Am I a bit biased since I love the Scuttler? Yeah, I totally recommend buying this as your first bringer. It's awesome. 5 stars. Scuttler is going as our first character in the A tier. Enter the Repair and Dismantle, a dual-sided bringer tailored for inspection, repair, and dismantling of fellow bringers, though its true nature is still not clear. There's Dismantle with its square skull-like head and a chest plate resembling a ribcage, and Repair with six eyes and various tools attached to its fingers. Multiple agony vials are connected to the side of its head, likely acting as fuel sources. In the center of the machine, another agony core lays. Typically, there will only be one repair and dismantle in a late stage bringer hive, doing everything stated earlier to assist in the colony. I actually never bought repair and dismantle before this video, I guess I was just never the most interested. Like I said, I love the design of repair and dismantle. Two separate sides, both connected to a single body. The gas mask, or even insect-like appearance of repair combined with the glowing red agony parts and with multiple differently sized eyes used to closely inspect bringers. On the other side, Dismantle, with a skeletal cyclops designed to go with its job of dismantling. I'll give it 5 stars for creativity. Onto the abilities. Repair and Dismantle is able to switch between sides, letting one or the other face the front. They can also each wear a grey jumpsuit with the heads of Freddy and Foxy on either side. Strange. They have bringer vision like most and can throw a punch, sprint, or scan for any other players in the area. Specifically, Repair is able to spawn a small agony bulb, in which I assume they can take a drink from. And on the other hand, Dismantle specifically can summon a hive eye onto the ground, 
This likely being the thing spying on you while down below the landfills in the tunnels. Sound effects they have include hydraulic sounds, a loud foghorn, the ambience of disassembly work, a slightly distorted alert sound, which sounds really cool by the way, and a scream. I'm actually impressed with how much this character actually has, so I'll give it 5 stars for abilities and sounds. Compared to other bringers, this one is a bit higher on the price range. 140 tickets isn't necessarily impossible to get, but for the average player, I'd say that's kind of a lot. I'll give Repair and Dismantle a good 4 stars for the price. I think it could be a little cheaper, but it's possible that it's just because I was never the most interested in using the character personally. And in my opinion, I don't think the price is 100% worth it for me. I'll still put Repair and Dismantle in S tier since they're, they're awesome. Our bringers are mysterious, predatory robotic bringers adapted to underwater environments. Covered in underwater debris like steering wheels, tubes, a broken spotlight, or planks, the character in-game is earned through the Holy Diver achievement in which you visit the Nautilus Dive Center and accept the offer to dive down to Faslantis. After discovering three animatronics down there named Bruce, Elliot, and Levi, you help them collect treasure throughout the quest before ultimately facing off against a Harbringer at the end, using a harpoon gun to shoot it down. Our bringers are very rare, since they're the kind of bringers that ultimately adapt and start their own hives in certain locations. They adapt until a standard and stable form for the bringers to develop is created, and then the hive can start to grow. Afterwards, harbringers can mix their own agony into the hive's core in order to help create a stable and knowledge hive mind. Now, the old design for harbringer was like a D tier, three stars at most. But a while back, it got a remodel, and oh my fucking god, it is beautiful! The Harbringer, as mentioned before, or at least the one in the Holy Diver quest, which was likely starting its own hive near that area, is made up of different pieces of ocean scrap, likely found in Vaslantis. It also has a deep sea variant, suiting it with a large spherical metal scuba diving helmet so that it can withstand the intense pressure of such depths, as well as an upgrade to the oxygen tanks on its back. This one stands out as a personal favorite of mine. I'm such a sucker for like mechanical aquatic themes like this, so I'm giving the design a fat 5 stars obviously. Harbringer also has so many abilities. In its basic form, it's able to open up the shell on its torso to reveal what I assume to be its core, or something, as well as disabling the water leaking particles across its body. It has bringer vision, and can swing a nicely animated punch. In both its sea and deep sea form, the Harbinger can burrow down to submerge itself in water to hide, and also scan for players. The sound effects it has include hydraulic sounds, an ocean sonar, a foghorn, and as usual, a scream. Its sea variant includes all those as well as underwater ambience. These abilities and sounds all go perfectly together with the design. Adding onto the whole underwater theme and giving this character exactly everything it needs, 5 stars. As for the price, Harbringer is worth 0 tickets, and the achievement to get it is actually pretty fun. It's long, yeah sometimes a bit boring, but it feels like a whole adventure and everything with its own climax. I like it. 5 stars for the price, and you know, as expected, I'm putting Harbringer in S tier. The Matriarch is technically not real. It's a concept of what bringers could become if they were to develop their hive to a certain degree. If they were to grow and empower their hive core so much to the point where the hive itself becomes practically a sentient god. This hypothetical sentient hive resembles a colossal mechanical queen ant in its form, constructed with typical bringer parts or designs. Despite its already massive size in-game, its real size is canonically way larger and was only downscaled for playability. I was in shock when this character first dropped. I didn't really see any of the teasers beforehand, so seeing this absolute monster on sale for the first time convinced me enough to buy it instantly. To start, the Queen Ant design is extremely fitting for bringers as a whole, committing to the whole idea that this species behaves like colonies of ants. There's so much to talk about with this design, but I'll keep it relatively short. To start, you really feel the sheer size and heaviness of this model when you play it in-game. 
with the loud robotic echoing footsteps and large pieces of armor surrounding the model. There's tons of different agony sources across its body, like its bottom half, vials on its back and arms, or two whole agony cores in its chest and head. The model is just so intricate and impressive, and to think that this thing could be much larger in reality really makes it feel like some kind of eldritch god. 5 stars for design. The Matriarch has a lot of abilities similar to other ones this high in the list, with the ability to burrow into its own agony core, toggle bringer vision, spawn hive eyes, scan for players, and turn into any bringer you have using its special selection. It can also hold on to its own core. All very good abilities. As for sounds, it only has three. The basic bringer sounds of foghorns, screams, and hydraulics. Though I'd say the abilities and model make up for it. So I'll give the Matriarch an expected 5 stars on this category. Lastly, the price. Holy shit, that is a lot of tickets. I am never gonna financially recover from this. 290 for this character. God damn, that is almost as much as Old Man Consequences. Now, I think this character is insanely good, alright? But I gotta give the price 4 stars. I am personally fine with paying this much for the Matriarch, but thinking about the average player, Maybe I'd make the character just a little bit cheaper. The model is really the only thing I can see influencing this cost, because like I said, it's fantastic. Though besides that, this doesn't stop the Matriarch from going in S tier. That's the last bringer on this list.